It is getting nice out. It's warming up. It's it's really finally spring, I think, and we're planting. We're getting our gardens ready. We've been moving dirt and getting everything ready to start planting. Put some plants in the ground, plant some seeds. And that reminded me of the story of the American Seed Company. In the 1960s and 70s, if you were a kid, you might remember seeing ads in the back of, of comic books or Boy's Life or, or, or other magazines about ways you could start your own business. You could, you could make money, you could earn prizes, things like that. Maybe selling greeting cards or selling magazines or selling ID bracelets. Um, but all those, you had to buy that stuff and then you had to resell it. There was one company that was different though. The American Seed Company of Lancaster, Pennsylvania would just send you seeds. You'd sign up and they would send you 50 seed packets that you sold for 30 cents a piece. And then you take part of that money, $25 you got for selling those seed packets. You take part of that money and you'd send it back to them or you'd send it all back and you get some type of prize. You know, like a BB gun or a transistor radio. They had a big book you could pick from. They had a basketball goal with Wilt Chamberlain's face on it. You know, stuff that you'd really want if you were a kid growing up in the 60s and 70s. And it worked really well for a while. The company did good until about 1970, and then something changed. Kids changed. It was, it was Generation X growing up. What happened in 1975 was all of a sudden kids just stopped sending money back. They would get the seeds and they would sell them and then they'd just keep all the money themselves. The company lasted, but not well, until 1981 when they finally went out of business because of this. They said over that six year period, 400,000 kids just kept the money. They lost $10 million in revenue, and they had to go out of business in 1981. The New York Times wrote this about it. The American Seed Company is closing its doors, done in by the dishonesty of its juvenile sales force. The company works on the honor system. We'll send you seeds free. You split the proceeds with us, but a growing number of school children don't do it. Nearly half of them have been pocketing the cash. A company spokesperson blames Watergate, implying a government-led decline in morality. The children blame it on everything from theft to the rigors of unpacking after vacation. And the parents, they blame greed. The companies, not their kids. But there's never been any evidence of chicanery from the American Seed Company. The question now is, what kind of oaks will grow from this group of acorns? The American Seed Company trusted their young sales force and the young sales force proved not to be trustworthy and the company went out of business. They stopped doing what they do. It's a story about a, a, a company that, that ran ads in the back of a comic book, but it could just as easily be the story of the modern church. God has invested in us. He's given us everything we need to make the world grow, to make life grow for our families, for our marriages, for our community, all of it question is, what have we done with it? What are we doing with it? The answer is pretty self-evident. We just got to be honest enough to open our eyes and not blame people that don't need blamed. I want to look at Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, it starts with verse 13. These are the seeds that God gives us. It says, you brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, use it to serve each other humbly in love. The entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you're going to be destroyed too. We've been given this investment. We've been given the investment of freedom and of Christ put into our lives. These are the seeds that God has given us and he gave us this freedom for the sake of other people for the sake of loving other people, for really loving our community, for really loving our spouses, for really loving our family. But what have we done with it? Because we get this freedom, this is what it says. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. The flesh desires what's contrary to the Spirit, the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do whatever you want. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. There is this conflict between what God wants and his intent in investing into us, all of that love that he's given us in Christ, all of that power and all that purpose he's given us in Christ in order to, to share it with everybody else. So that's what the Spirit wants. But our flesh wants to keep it all for ourselves, wants to make it about us, wants to pocket the money, wants to, to do it our way. And Paul says, this freedom you've been given, 
It's for other people, but it causes you to be in conflict, both in conflict, one against the other. We got to understand that's a real conflict. Theologian Karl Barth said, conflict does not mean peaceful coexistence. It doesn't mean we kind of work on it over time, let alone cooperation. How can there be cooperation between total freedom and total bondage? We deny our freedom to be in Christ by choosing not to love other people. We deny that we were really ever made free when we give into the flesh and we try to make it about ourselves. Whether physically, materially, emotionally, or spiritually, we say, no, I don't want your freedom, God. I'm going to keep my bondage. I'm going to take all the seeds, put them in my pocket. Nothing's going to grow from it. This isn't what the plan was. No, Bart said freedom in Christ is being free from committing sin and being free for faith, obedience, and gratitude. That freedom is the way we want to live, what we want to have, better than a Wilt Chamberlain basketball goal or a Red Ryder BB gun. That's really living. And when we keep those seeds in our pocket, we don't do anything with them. We never get to experience that life. And it's evident that we don't experience that life. I think sometimes people think that they're tricking people and think, I look good enough, I act good enough, but it's never tricked anyone. 2,000 years ago, Paul wrote this, and he said, the acts of the flesh are obvious. It's obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, fractions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those living like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's evident. We know what it looks like. You're not tricking anybody. If the seeds are in your pocket, your marriage isn't growing. Your kids aren't going to be more like Christ. Your community isn't getting closer and closer to God because of the life you're living and the investment of freedom that God's put into you. It's evident. But that's not all that's evident. It's also evident if you are planting those seeds, if you are sharing that grace and you are making good on the investment God made for you. Because the very next passage says, but the fruit of the Spirit living His way is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified with the flesh. We're not interested with its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. It's evident which way we're living. It's evident what we're doing with the seeds that God has given us. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow in your own life spiritually. You reap what you sow in your family, with your spouse and your relationship. You reap what you sow in your kids. You reap what you sow in our community. If it's not what we want it to be, where are the seeds? What have you been doing with what God has given you and what could you do better? God has made this great investment in us. Let's make good on it. Let's make good with the, the seeds of love and life and grace and Christ that have been entrusted to us. Let's make good on the investment before it's too late and we don't have the chance to. I look forward to seeing you again real soon.